I'm going to jump to day four of the devotional, which was entitled Obeying the Voice of God. I'm going to read the first paragraph because this really resonated with me. Okay. The reward of our faith comes through our obedience to the word of God to us. We love how spiritual it sounds when we say things like, speak, Lord. We spend hours on our knees begging for the voice of God. Then when he speaks, our response remains, speak, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> really resonated with me because I can I can just see that so much you're waiting for God's answer, he answers and you're just like, okay that was a nice answer I want, I want another answer I want another answer and it got me thinking I haven't read the Bible from the very beginning to the very end but I know that when God speaks he speaks with purpose, there's no word of his that goes forth without a purpose mm-hmm. and without a plan, so for us to hear God's voice and us not to respond by doing something, wow. it just doesn't make sense. His word fulfills something yeah. every single time yeah. he speaks. I was thinking of two different examples. Obviously, when he spoke to create the world, he spoke and all these things were created. And simple times when, um, so I'm thinking of Joshua. Joshua was quite scared of doing lots mm. of things. And God kept saying to him, be bold, be courageous, do not be afraid. Mm. And although that sounds like comforting words, the reason God was telling him to be bold is because he had instructed him to do something. So by him telling him to be bold, he's basically saying, go and do what I told you to do. Yeah. So obeying the voice of God, how can we obey the voice of God? Because sometimes it seems so difficult. We just want to hear him telling us sweet things and right. telling us how much he loves us and how great we are because he made us great. But mm. how do we go from being just hearers of our God's voice to being doers and obeyers of his voice? Um, for me, I would say it's um, it could be something to do with our trust level yeah. for God, Ooh. because mm. if you really trusted God and you knew and you knew it that you knew that you knew that, even if He asked you to go and jump off a cliff, God's the one who's giving you this this instruction. You know He's still got your back. Do you understand? So somewhere along those lines, He's still gonna come and rescue you. I'm still gonna do it because God has asked me to do. Mm. So I think. We, we, we're bold enough to ask him but when he tells us because it's not what we want to hear we just keep asking and asking and asking and sometimes I think when um, when we're not doing or when we're not doers it's because we already have um, a prior idea of what we want to hear from God mm. so if you hear something that's not in line with that <laughs> you just don't want to do it like we'll sit down yeah, that's not, that's not what I but I guess as well you know when you're coming to God you need to come with an open heart because he's God mm. he can tell you anything and you shouldn't be asking if you know you're not ready to obey anything that's the truth so I think it's a trust thing and it just highlights why it's so important to trust God because if you don't trust him then if he, even if he tells you what you should be doing, you won't do it, so you're still going to miss out anyway. And um, go on, sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to say, it also comes back to relationship. And yeah. um, you don't trust someone you don't have a relationship with. Yeah. You don't um, listen to someone you don't have a relationship mm-hmm. with. It's like the stranger on the street, would you know? Um, we do get into this place where we like to hear things in a particular way Mm -hmm. and I think I was discussing with my sister when she was talking about oh I don't feel like I hear from God I said that's because you're so you're so waiting for this you're waiting for the voice or you're waiting for for somebody to come and tell you something I was like trust in the fact that you have a relationship with God and God speaks to you and it's not necessarily always going to be the same exact way he speaks to you each and every time so you've got to be open to every different aspect he can speak to you in whether it's straight his word or whether it is someone coming to speak to you or whether it is a dream whether it is a vision accept all of these ways as God speaking to me right. and then move yeah mm. literally get up and move if God says get up get up um not getting up and or not being obedient is then when we get upset. It's when we feel like, oh, God, you're not speaking to me. God, you didn't tell me what to do. God, we're still stuck in the same place. But God's like, I've given you the instructions. You just haven't moved. You haven't done what I've told you to do. So therefore, you're going to be stuck in that same place all the time. You, you know what's even, just to add on to this, what's so powerful as well is that I want to even throw and ask, how many people actually want to have a relationship with God more than him making them feel comfortable. Yeah. 
So it's not about okay, I'm trying to. It's not about Lord and Master and all of that kind of thing. You lead me, no. It's like I want the detached house with the garden. I want my husband and three point five kids. I want to have a great job. You know, we have a vision for ourselves. But how many people actually are ready to go on a journey with God in life? So how many Christians realistically are saying, you know what, God, you know, this is my life. I've given my life to you, and I want you to lead me. So when you lead me, if you tell me drop, I mean, think about it. In this day and age, how many people going to say that drop everything? They didn't say God told me that I need to drop and get everything and go to China. How comes we don't hear that? How comes God don't say that no more? Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, I'm not telling nobody to drop everything and move to China, no. But what I am saying is that how many times in your life have you done drastic movements or done stuff because we're comfortable? Yeah. We want God to to fit into our comfortable box. We don't. We're not about Him leading anywhere, us anywhere outside of our comfort. Mm-hmm. You know. So ask yourself: Do you really actually want to hear what God has to say about your life? That's the question people need to start with. And I think that gets to the point where you have to say to yourself: I'm sick and tired of this comfortable Christianity. I want the Christianity that's in the Bible. I want to actually have a to and fro with God. I want to know what He has for me. And then I want to grow up spiritually and take those steps to experience this incredible thing that he has in his mind that I'm not living. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that's what people need to, to, to really be honest with themselves. Examine yourself and see where we're in the faith. I think that's a, we, we, we just as believers need to, to do that examining continuously. Mm-hmm. And I guess just to add, if you're comfortable, you're not fulfilling your potential. No, mm-hmm. no. Ooh, that's the stretch. No, no. That's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs>